Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. In this example number one, we will discuss the BGT differential amplifier using the simple two BGTs in this configuration as shown here. We will start with this very simple example where we use a ideal current source as our tail current source and we will see how we can determine the required values for this example. Of course, we will work out the calculations step by step and also verify this in spice simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following circuit given and the voltage VCC and VE are shown here that those are the uh, voltages for this circuit. The RC, which is this and that resistor each 10 kilo ohms and the tail current is equal to two milliamps. The beta is 150 and the early voltage is 60 volts and also the VBE, so the base emitter junction is assumed to be constant at 0.7 volts. The Q1, the transistor Q1 and Q2 are assumed to be matched, so this is the notation for that. It means they have the same beta, they have the same early voltage and also they have the same physical dimensions. Everything's the exact same for both transistors. What we would like to calculate is the following. We have two questions, the balanced differential mode voltage gain. And the second one is the balanced common mode voltage gain. What does this mean? Balanced Balance means actually that you look at the both at outputs, so you measure the, bit, the difference between these two. And if you have single ended, then you measure only at this node or that node with respect to the ground. That is the diff uh, difference between balanced and single-ended. You can also use double-ended instead of balanced. Okay, let's look at our solution. First, the calculation part. Now, since the Q1 and Q2 are equal to each other, that means they are matched and they are biased at the same potential. You can see that also here, the VBE, and those also are exact same. The transconductance, because of that, is for the Q1, which has GM1, will be the same as the transconductance GM2 for Q2. So we can just say, let's define then just one transconductance for this circuit and call this just GM defined as GM1 is equal to GM2. Then we can calculate this GM1 using the currents here, the collector current of Q1 or the collector current of Q2, it doesn't matter. So we can say, let's define this and I have now chosen as the IC1 as my parameter for this formula for GM. What is IC1? That is this current, which is really the DC value of the collector current. And IC2 here is this one. In this case, since this is a differential mode operation, we have also have the emitter and the for the first transistor, Q1 and the Q2. And that will be the emitter here, e, IE1 and IE2 will be exactly the half of this tail current. So if this tail current is 2 milliamps, that means this is 1 milliamp, this is also 1 milliamp. Now, if you assume that the, uh, the beta is very large or the base currents are almost zero, then the emitter currents are equal to collector current. But I don't assume that here in this example, so I will take that into account. So I will say the collector current here IC1 is equal to beta over beta plus one times the emitter current. This is a very standard formula. And then you substitute now the also that the emitter one, so the emitter current of Q1 is the half of the tail current. And then now substitute the values for the beta and also the tail current IQ. So you'll get 150 over 151 times the 0 0.002 over two. So you get actually one milliamp here. That will give you 0 0.9934 milliamps. So close to what we actually set in the approximation, which is approximately one milliamp. But this is of course a slightly different. So that will be also used here as a more exact analysis. And then we can say the following for our transconductance formula, because we know the IC1 and this VT is our thermal voltage. It is at room temperature approximately 300 Kelvin is this value 0 0.026 or 26 millivolts. Now you calculate that you get now here 0 0.0382 Simons or 38.2 Simons. Okay. Millisimons. So we have now our transconductance. So that is really important. Now there is also an effect due to the early voltage. Now the early voltage will create here that is an intrinsic dynamic 
resistance or impedance of the transistor which is between the collector and the emitter so there is a small resistor here or maybe a large resistor depending on this value or the current and the following value uh, the formula is actually shown here so the smaller the ro so smaller the r means dynamic resistor is equal to the early voltage over the collector voltage which is the dc value this is by the way also an approximation for this circuit but it's good enough we have 60 volts over our emit uh, the collector voltage dc you get now here 60.4 kilo ohms approximately or 6399 ohms now we will now use this ro small letter ro and also the rc for re gain because this resistor ro which is shown here is actually between these two nodes connected so actually parallel between the collector and the emitter so that means actually the equivalent load resistor that means the load was purely RC if the VA was not there or infinite that will be then now a parallel combination in our AC domain because in AC calculations shortly you will see that that the RC will be going to ground because this VCC will be AC ground and then also the RO will go to ground we call just this RC prime will be the RC in parallel with RO now that will be then this formula this is a familiar formula for two resistors in parallel now that will be then 10 kilo ohms times this 60.4 kilo ohms and then you get now there 8580 ohms so it is lower than this original rc okay now first question we have now the necessary information and we can now answer the first question a which is the balanced differential mode voltage gain which is a differential mode balanced okay now what is the formula for that this is the formula you see the differential mode output divided by the differential mode input so vod over vid that is always the inverse so that's the minus so gm the, which is the gm of q1 or q2 that doesn't matter times this rc prime we have the gm we have our rc prime just calculated so just substitute now the values you get now here minus 328 that is the voltage gain for this circuit in the differential mode input operation and so differential mode output now for the balanced common mode voltage gain we connect both inputs to the same voltage and then measure again between these two nodes and also calculate now the gain now for that we will use this formula so again differential mode out but the common mode in now you get this formula again with a minus sign you see again here this rc prime but there's an extra parameter here which is called RQ, which is not visible in the circuit. What does that RQ mean? Now, the RQ is actually the output impedance of this current source. In this case, the current source is a perfectly ideal current source. So for an ideal current source, we know that RQ must be infinite. So this value here is then infinite also. If you substitute that, which is of course not uh, valid according to the mathematical operations or notation so we just do it anyway that means it's acb which is then our common mode balance gain will be actually zero so we actually end up to zero if you now will calculate the common mode rejection ratio which is then the differential mode voltage gain over the common mode voltage gain will be also infinite because you divide by zero now calculated a and b in this case so let's now move on to the next step which is the verification using the simulator and these are the two values for our gains and also the current current which is handy to check that in our dc analysis the first one is the simulation result for our dc analysis this circuit is for the differential mode and this circuit is for the common mode you can see that why is the case because this is common mode this is differential mode the, co the differential mode has just a differential value between these two inputs of the Q1 and Q2 but the common mode is as the name implies we have only one source which is common at both input refer to ground the rest is the exact same by the way so you see the IC1 here is measured which is here 993.9 approximately microamps which is close to this and this is also for IC2. You see that actually they are exact same. So the splitting here for the tail current is indeed verified here that this is indeed exactly uh, in two uh, halves. The values for the IC1 and IC2 are exact same in the common mode operation. 
and also the voltages VO1 and VO2 so there is no difference at all for this circuit by the way we will use the uh, the chip which has uh, four uh, identical NPN transistors BGTs and that's this uh, this type so that 300 okay now moving on to the AC analysis or the Bode plot to looking at the frequency response this is the Bode plot for the gain only for our differential mode circuit which is then this circuit now what you see is the low frequency gain is 50.3 dB and actually it stays this has this value up to let's say 1 megahertz but the cutoff frequency is approximately at 17 megahertz this is not really the issue for this example what you see is that the gain 50.3 dB can be converted to a scalar value using this formula so to 10 10 to the power of 50.3 over 20 you get now 327 which is of course the absolute value which is close to that 200, uh, 328 so we can say this is very fine so this is fine also from the body plot now we can do the similar thing for the common mode operation this is for common mode now for common mode you see that uh, also there is a uh, response as a function of frequency now for low frequencies up to let's say 1 or 10 kilohertz the gain is fairly low minus 60.77 db that minus 60.77 db is actually almost yeah, zero so really it's very small so it is also very fine what is interesting which is not taken into account in our calculations that if the frequencies goes up for higher frequencies uh, in this case up to 10 gigahertz you will see that the common mode voltage gain will go up that means that will now approach one so that is of course important if you want to operate your circuit at for example one megahertz is not the same actually as we have for one kilohertz that is of course something which is not discussed in this example but just to com for completeness i also showed you this plot you see that actually this is indeed a huge change now because of the frequency change now let's bring them together also these two uh, actually three values but we look at these two now specifically now the transient response is really important for again now the differential mode operation the first two are the IC1 and IC2 those are the currents collector current 1 collector current 2 this is our input differential uh, differential input voltage which is 10 millivolts peak or so 20 millivolts peak peak this is the VO1 and VO2 and we have now here the differential mode output voltage so that are all labeled here what you see is it's interesting that the average value of the collector current is 993.9 approximately microamps which is what we had calculated approximately also so that is really average it goes up and goes down because of this change in the input voltage so that there's actually a biasing here and this excitation is because of this change in the vid now what you see here is the output because of this differential input of 20 millivolts peak peak that the output has also a peak peak value of approximately 6.5 but if you go a little bit closer or make it accurately with using a cursor you will get the differential mode voltage gain is then equal to 6.496 volts peak peak so if you calculate this that will be divided by 20 millivolts peak peak and you will get now here minus 325 so we can say this is uh, verified let's also look at the transfer response for our common mode voltage now this circuit is now then used this is the common mode uh, operation again the currents but now see that you see now in the current that the current is not changing that much because it is just common mode so there is no not really a change actually in the currents collector and uh, collector one and collector two in this case the vic is has changed from 10 millivolts peak to 5 volts peak in order to see the difference uh, more uh, um, clearly at the output so what you see is that now the dvod which is our common mode output voltage is almost zero this is just noise you see that it is uh, approximately at pico uh, volts so that's almost nothing so this, you can see that this is just fluctuating and this is just uh, sort of noise for this circuit then we can say the common mode voltage gain is indeed zero 
so approaching zero, very close to zero. So it is also verified according to calculations. All right, this is our first example about the BGT differential uh, amplifier. We have seen actually with a very simple circuit using this ideal tail current source, how we can calculate the differential mode and the common mode voltage gains in the balanced operation. If you have any questions about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. In the next example, I will try to make this current source more practical using a current mirror or any other current source. And then we will see again the examples there. So stay tuned and don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.